My name is uh, Dr. Fred Bukachi. I'm a clinical cardiologist by training, but also have a very strong interest in medical informatics. Um, I'm working at the University of Nairobi as a lecturer, but I also work as an advisor to MGVNet. Um, this is a part of the program of the Millennium Villages project that is uh, building up the health information system for the health center. About um, today, very briefly, is just how uh, e-health or electronic health has evolved in the region for the last 15 years, having had the advantage of working on various research projects and witnessed uh, tremendous growth uh, with technology and, and service and where we are today and how uh, MGVNet uh, is trying to use the technologies uh, uh, at the community level. Essentially what has happened is uh, within the East African region uh, or Sub-Saharan Africa, there have been many, many projects uh, funded by donors in collaboration with various uh, uh, NGOs, um, including uh, uh, United Nations agencies. And many of those projects uh, have addressed the issue of how do we use computers effectively uh, in health? How can we be able to use uh, uh, the power of computers to be able to make healthcare, uh, first of all, uh, more easily accessible, how can we be able to collect information uh, that we can use for policy makers. Now some of those projects I've been involved in, I had the privilege of working with a number of people internationally to implement those projects. One of the old projects was HealthNet which began right here at the University of Nairobi and essentially the issue during that time was how can we improve three things. One was communication between health workers in remote sites and uh, uh, urban centers and also between various urban centers within the region, uh, particularly within universities. And we proved that we could use uh, basic email technology to do that. Second objective was how can we be able to use uh, electronic mail, uh, basic electronic mail to be able to access up-to-date information to be able to help us in clinical decision making and also uh, in, for purposes of uh, uh, policy decisions. Um, and the third aspect was interaction between uh, professionals. It's important that professionals uh, in the region, a particular country in the region or uh, um, around the world, interact so they can be able to exchange information. And we proved that um, very early on, uh, way back in the beginning of the 90s, that uh, by using simple technology, uh, we can be able to do that. And over the years, things have evolved, uh, basically driven by demand. Uh, one of them being how can we be able to collect basic information from uh, district hospitals, from uh, health centers, and use that information uh, for policymakers. And that's part of the reason we are, we've been gathered here uh, this week to be able to look at some of the tools that have evolved uh, over the time. Of course, uh, the advantage today is that uh, we have a, a better telephone uh, network, mobile telephones. We didn't have them in the early 90s. Uh, the advantage now is that internet is much faster than it was during that particular time when we began the first experiments here in, in the early 90s. So there is a tremendous improvement in the infrastructure. But we cannot ignore what we have always uh, called the four C's, uh, challenges. Those are the C's, first C is the connectivity itself. Connectivity has been a problem over the years. It is improving, but there are places on the continent that still have a problem with connectivity. But we do hope that by moving to things like rapid SMS that utilize existing uh, telephone services, uh, connectivity isn't going to be a major problem. The other problem, of course, has been cost. Cost of this telecommunication uh, equipment has been very expensive. Most of our governments have relied on donor funds. They haven't been able to invest appropriately in, in uh, telecommunication equipment. The other good news is that within the region, Again, uh, the cost of computing equipment and so on has actually drastically re uh, reduced. So things are getting more affordable. Most people have got telephone handsets and therefore they can be able to use uh, them for different functions. The other C, of course, has been that of uh, content. It is not just in enough to build the infrastructure, but we must also build sufficient content so that people can be able to get onto websites, uh, and look at what's available. And content really comes from the kind of data we collect.
to the periphery. Again, being very relevant to uh, what MGVNet is doing at the moment, trying to build databases that people can be able to access uh, and use the information for decision making, either at clinical level or at, at policy level. And the final C uh, is normally culture. Um, there has been a tremendous change in the culture of communication in sub-Saharan Africa over the years. Uh, people usually uh, you employed the more oral communication styles, but now uh, in Africa have already embraced the new technologies. We can be able to communicate effectively using newer tools like everybody else. So the culture has effectively changed. So those have been traditionally the four major challenges. And we are uh, progressively trying to uh, um, get over those challenges. And my hope is that uh, uh, within the next couple of years, we're going to have uh, this technology available in most parts of sub-Saharan Africa, particularly at community level.